what's going on guys welcome back to this channel it's all about architecture engineering and construction and like i always say we are, where we are all about bettering the african narrative okay so if you're looking for any information that is related to architecture that is related to engineering that is related to construction you stumbled on the right channel you stumbled on the right video and please tighten your seat belt because you're about to get exactly what you wanted okay so remember the information we share on this this information is not basically meant to be a substitute to professional advice so whenever you're going to embark on your construction project remember to contact your architect contact your engineer contact your mechanical engineer contact your plumbing engineer contact your electrical engineer whoever it is really okay So about about two three weeks ago, I heard of a story of someone who actually a developer who gave a certain amount of money to an engineer to construct for them a project. And uh, what so happened is that uh, of course they did the foundation works, they built up the plinth walls, and they cast the ground slab. And after casting the ground slab, of course they had to wait for the slab to actually dry so they can proceed with construction. So two weeks two weeks later, the construction actually hasn't started, and the developer is a bit concerned. So he calls the engineer and asks him why is my project not moving forward i mean i gave you all the money to proceed with the construction so then the engineer says us oh wait no we are, you know we are still waiting for the stub to dry so we can proceed with the construction so one month down the road the same story two months down the road the same story three months down the same story the engineer is saying we are waiting for the for the slab to dry so we can actually proceed with the construction okay uh, any engineer watching this channel really understands that it does not really take three months quite frankly it doesn't take three months for construction to actually produce or even for the slab itself to achieve its strength okay so Uh, in discussing actually how long it should take for the slab to be strong enough for continued construction that is for loading the rest of the blocks and also of course human loads and things like that it's important to first of all understand what actually the strength of concrete is okay so the strength of concrete is basically measured in terms of megapascals it's really just a measure of how much load that the, con that, that the concrete is able to bear without crushing without collapsing okay so uh the way this strength is achieved is that it's achieved by designing certain mixed ratios of cement of sand which is fine aggregate and also coarse aggregate which is actually the usual stones that you see so for example if i take an example of about 25 mpa that is one of the most commonly used grades of concrete for construction uh, for mid-level construction that is for both commercial buildings and residential buildings okay so you will, you will say, for example, to achieve the grade 25, uh, we'll, for example, get one bag of cement, which is always 50 kilograms of cement. Then we mix it with um, 100 kilograms of sand, which usually amounts to about two full wheelbarrows of sand. And then we mix it also with 200 kilograms of coarse aggregate, which is also usually about four, three and a half to four wheelbarrows of, 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 of coarse aggregate. That is the stones that you see. When you do the math properly and you're batching by mass, that is by weight, you realize that the ratio is one to two to four. That is one kilogram of cement is mixing two kilograms of sand, which is also mixing four kilograms, three and a half or four kilograms of aggregate. That's where the ratio of one to two to four actually comes in, okay? So basing on that, you achieve your actual, your grade 25 of concrete. Now, let's understand um, when you add too much water, it's actually going to compromise on the strength of the concrete. Uh, and also when you add very little water, it means that the mix is going to be very unworkable, which means that the concrete will not exactly or easily penetrate through those spaces between the iron bars and the rings and all that to reach all the parts of the formwork which is one of the reasons why you see that at the end of the construction you will see some 
honeycombing within the concrete. That is those those small air pockets within the concrete, which show that in some of the areas the concrete was actually not able to reach. Okay, so you really just need to have a mix that is just workable enough for it to give you the ultimate strength and also to be able to make it easy for the concrete to reach all the corners of the formwork anyway that is for actually your engineer to determine okay uh but uh, also uh you might also want to notice that after we've cast the concrete you realize that over a certain period of time, usually about five to seven days, water is being poured on the slab to help it in its cold curing. Water is being poured on the slab to actually help it, to help the hydration process of cement to help it in hard, to help it in hardening. Also, we want to protect this this slab within at least the first four to seven days to protect it from very strong weather conditions, mainly the sunshine. That is why sometimes we might need to pour sand just so that the, that, that the sun does not hit the slab directly because that also alters the chemistry that is actually happening as the concrete is hardening. If not, you might just want to always pour water onto the slab uh, every day for at least the first four to seven days so that the first initial stages of the concrete, of hardening of the concrete, are taken well care of, okay? Then also, um, we need to understand that as the concrete is actually hardening, the process is kind of gradual, okay? So, for example, when you just cast it, there is a certain strength that is achieved within the first 48 hours or the first 24 hours. At least after the first 24 hours, uh, concrete has achieved about 30%, 30, 30% of its strength, okay? So then as it goes on, after probably three days, it has achieved about 60%. Uh, so um, after we've cast the concrete, and of course it needs to dry, we need to understand that this process is actually a gradual process. It does not happen overnight that the concrete which you cast to be 25 MPA is now 25 MPA. It is also quite a process. For example, you might say after the first 48 hours, that's about two days, you will say that the concrete has achieved about, uh, let's say, about 30% of its ultimate strength. And then it keeps on going on and hardening and hardening. Uh, by around five days, four to five, four to four to six days, it will have achieved about 65% of its strength. And as it goes on and on, then by two weeks, it's known that concrete has achieved about 90% of its ultimate strength. And then what is the final strength? It's usually at 28 days. At 28 days, it is also known that concrete must have achieved 99% uh, of its ultimate strength. So which means if you had designed it to be 25 MPA, by the time, by the 28 days, it's supposed to be 24.9 something, okay? Which is also safe enough to say that that at that time, it's the end of the drying period of the concrete, okay? But also, for the first three to four days when it has achieved about 65 to 70% of the strength, it is safe for human loads and also for continued construction. So you can put on your hollow blocks, you can do the construction, you can do, you can really do what you want. You can bring the machinery up, you can, people can walk over it and they can really do as much as they want as also the, the concrete is also hardening even more and more. Of course, however, it's not it's not really very safe to remove the scaffolding. The scaffolding are those poles that are just under the slab that are helping it, that we're actually creating the formwork, okay? It's important for the, the hardening of the concrete to actually continue while it's all still intact without removing those poles, okay? So to have all your questions, to have, to have that cleared out and that answered, four days to seven days is really sufficient or it is safe for continued construction provided do not remove the props under it doesn't mean that when you remove the props under the slab might collapse no it might or might not collapse but it is safe for it it is good for it to keep achieving its ultimate strength while it's still intact okay so otherwise thank you very much guys for watching and have yourself a good time